And yes, we are back. And we are back for a last, the last talk of this uh, Big Things E conference at the attic. So don't go because this is your last chance to enjoy some of the time with us and our two next speakers. So allow me to introduce them. We all have our COVID stories to tell. Who knows when any of the latest release vaccines will be available to all, if ever. In the meantime, it is vital that we tackle the virus as best as we can with the tools we have, and that means repurposing existing drugs. Traditionally, this takes a long time and relies on heavy and expensive computation. Well, our next speakers are taking a different approach. Intriguing, right? To tell us more about it, let's welcome Albert Mercadal and Borja Medende from Fujitsu. Hello. So, hi, hi. Albert, Borja, you have, yeah, the, you, you have the responsibility of being the last speakers of this conference, at least in the attic. So, no so, pressure. Yeah, no pressure. You're going to be <laughs> el broche de oro, you know, you are the, the, last, we will the, the last touch. <laughs> That's what everybody will remember of this conference until right. next year. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> So whenever you're ready, we'll be looking, we're looking forward to listening to you. And remember, yeah, at sure. the end, if this time, we'll allow the, um, the audience to ask questions. So guys, your last chance to ask our speakers, use the chat, send your questions as soon as possible, because sometimes they arrive when they're gone. Don't wait till the last minute, okay? Let's enjoy our last chat and last talk at this uh, attic today. Come on. So, yeah, thank you. So let's start. So yeah, so my name is Albert Mercadal and I'm heading the Global Center of Excellence in Advanced Analytics for, for Fujitsu. And with me we also have Borja. So Borja, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Borja Menéndez and I'm leading the Digital Analyzer team here in Spain under the Center of Excellence of Advanced Analytics in, in Fujitsu. So yeah, so let's start. So today we would like to talk about how quantum inspired computing or quantum computing can, can optimize and, and, and may help in accelerating the current process of, of drug discovery and more specifically in how we can improve the molecule screening process during uh, a drug repurposing for COVID-19 fight. So let's start. Uh, in order to start, I would like to give you a bit more context about the problem. So here in the slide, you can see a, a traditional timeline the uh, a traditional timeline on drug discovery process, which normally lasts for in between 12 to, to 15 years, as you can see. So we're starting from the search of new, of new drug molecules, ending, ending by the preclinical and clinical trials until launching the new product to, to the market. So having said that, specifically all the tasks in the preclinical drug discovery market normally are, are, are plagued by inefficiencies and anything we can do in order to optimize this timeline, uh, it's great for, for the industry. Just to give you a, a, a figure or, or a bit of a view of the, of the kind of expenditure that we have uh, nowadays, it's more or less forecasted that by 2024, and this is a forecast before the COVID-19 appears, it's, it's about the levels of investment will be around $200 billion per year for, from the pharmaceutical industry, without, of course, taking into, uh, into account other research, public institutions, and so on. So the discovery of new, therapy, of new therapeutic, ther therapeutic drugs is slow, it can take a lot of time, um, and it's really important, and this is not something that is just affecting the, the industry, the pharmaceutical industry, but it's also affecting the medical profession, and of course, the health of millions of, of, of people across the world. And, and I would say that the need for this disruption is clear or was clear. And of course, with the current COVID-19 situation worldwide, it's, it's even more, more clear. So here the question is not uh, that it can be, if it can be or not, it cannot be, or, or it cannot be improved, but how it can be improved. So if we, if we jump in the next slide, uh, today we will talk about specifically of the phase that we call design and optimization. And during this talk, we will focus on the design uh, on, 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 the, on the screening of, of, of the screening of molecules. For me, more specific, normally this task or this kind of task takes around 15 months, and we think that we can lower that or down that into more or less two months. So if we go a bit more in depth uh, of the disease causing pathogens, normally often contain specific proteins that are responsible for the for the infection. So 
blocking this kind of proteins is key to stop the, uh, any disease. So early stages of the of the drug discovery uh, normally involve the identification of small molecules that normally in the industry are called HIDs, which normally are capable of blocking these proteins by, by, by hiding them or binding them. So the problem here is that there is an almost infinite number of, of molecules to, to assess with a potential all with a potential one only uh, and only one molecule uh, will bind the, the, the protein that we are one, that we want to, to that we want to bind. So finding the right one, it's like I would say, uh, like finding a needle in, in, in a high stack. So current libraries uh, for searching this kind of solution are only normally capable of reviewing up to few tens of millions of molecules. And existing processes take, as we said, like two years or, or so. So here we are going to take about uh, we are going to talk about how quantum inspired computing enables the screening of a lot more molecules, which reduce the heat molecule search timeline to just eight weeks. So this, at the end, uh, increase the the speed of, of of the analysis, means the range of targets can be progressively progressively sorry sorry progressively reduced leaving just a core of high, high, high value candidates, significantly lowering the risk of, of trigger failure, which is also costing a lot of, of money to, to the industry. So if we jump on the next slide, you can maybe ask why we're talking here about uh, quantum computing or quantum inspired computing. So in optimizing the design of new drugs for, for COVID-19 or for other diseases, the pharma, the pharma industry uh, as a whole normally, let's say, uh, have to do two tasks, depending on, on, on the purpose. So first of all, there is the task of, of finding new drugs from zero, from scratch, or from uh, existing molecules, which normally can be solved as a constraint satisfaction problem through a combinatorial enumeration, uh, enumeration of the chemical space. And then, in, and it's the case that we are going to go through later on uh, for drug repurposing, uh, we also need to analyze the similarity among molecules, and this is, is, is also can be translated somehow as, a, as an optimization problem. So having this in mind, anyone could, could say that quantum computing, quantum computing could be significantly important to face the, the challenge. So here the question is, by when? So if we type it in, in, in Google, we, we Google it, and we, and we Google uh, quantum computing will, the most common answers are quantum computing will never work or quantum, or quantum computing will change the world. So of course, as Fujitsu, as a technology providers, we, we really think that we are in the second one, so that quantum computing will, will change the world. But if you see the, the Garner curve uh, of the maturity, the, the, the typical Garner curve on the maturity of the technologies, someone would say that quantum computing is still in the research phase, even if some providers, as you may know, Google, IBM, and so on, they already have some quantum computers ready for research, but not for industrial purposes. So here, Fujitsu, and as, as well as other, other providers, uh, we have created what we call quantum-inspired computing, and at the end it's a digital circuit that, that, that runs in a normal temperature, so in a normal um, uh, data center but allow us to reproduce some capabilities of the quantum computers today and, of course, uh, solve some industrial, uh, so, some really big problems in, in, in the real world. So here the question is why we are talking about quantum if it's not really, uh, let's say, the, physical, the, the physics quantum that, uh, that a quantum physicist uh, would, 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 would mention. So mainly because the, the circuit or the device that we are talking about, that in our case, or the case of Fujitsu is digital annular, it's mainly inspired by the three of the main principles of, of, of the quantum physics. So first, it's inspired by super, so superposition, sorry, because it, it has parallel speed up, which means that we can deal with several states in, in the same time. Second, it's inspired by quantum tuning, which is the capability of escaping from a local minimum and cross a, a, a higher point of energy to reach the global minimum. So what we are doing in digital leader, it's what we call an healing process, that at the end, it's escaping from a local minimum in trying to reach a, a global minimum of the function. And finally, because it's inspired by entanglement in the sense that the, how the circuit is, is created or is designed, all the nodes are, are interconnected and that allow, allow us or the, or, the or the mathematicians to, to easy map the problem into, into, the, into the device. 
So here the question is how difficult it is to work with this kind of technologies. At the end, uh, as you see in the slide, it's a quite straightforward, let's say, process. It's a three-step process. The first one is identifying the problem as any data scientist of the world. And at the end, what means the identifying a problem in this case for a combinatorial optimization problem means to define the target function, so what, what we want to minimize or maximize. And secondly, decide or, or, or understand which are the constraints that impact this target function. Just to put an example, for example, for the travel salesman, typical problem on, on, on combinatorial optimization that the, the, the travel, that the men that the salesman cannot go through the same city twice. So this is a typical, let's say, constraint in a combinatorial problem. Secondly, at the time that we have defined the problem and contextualized the problem, what we do is mapping the problem into a, a function. So these functions are called like, I call or both Isaac models or Cubo, and Cubo, for the ones that I don't know, uh, stands for quadratic and constraint binary optimization uh, pro, uh, formula. And look like the one that, that, that you see in the screen. And finally, at the time that we have mapped the problem to the to that kind of, of functions, the only thing that we have to do is query the system in the cloud, like as a software as a service, and just receive the, the answer normally in, in a few seconds. Today, just to give you an overview, for example, in, in, in our case in Fujitsu, we have a, a capacity of 100k k bits in, in terms of power of computation plus uh, 64 bits for, for, for precision for, of, the, of the model that, that, that we can run over, over the A. So, and finally, before we jump to, to the yes case that we want to go through today and, and more how we will take the, 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 we take it from there, uh, I just wanted to give you an overview of other examples in the industry that we are working right now, or we have been working for the last year, in order to give you an overview of what this kind of technology can do for, 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 for different industries or for different verticals. So just to give you uh, some examples, for example, we have worked together with BBVA, the Spanish bank, for, 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 for portfolio optimization, in this case, with the asset management guy, in trying to demonstrate that Cubo models and this kind of technologies uh, enable the, 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 the portfolio managers to build more diversified portfolios, which is quite key for, for the industry. Then we have other example, examples, for example, in the logistics and the supply chain world, we have worked both for Toyota and, and the Japan Post in trying to optimize some, some parts of the, of the supply chain and most of times reducing the cost by 2 to, to 5%, which is, which is a lot of money for, for this kind of, of processes. And we also have worked, for example, with several uh, uh, automotive uh, OEMs, so car manufacturers, specifically in Germany, where we have also, uh, let's say, um, optimized some processes specifically in the, on the, on the um, production on the production lines, and we also have work, for example, for, for designing new, 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 new parts of, of the car. And finally, uh, also with the pharma industry, and of course with the King's College of London, that's the case that we that Borja will, will start explaining in a few seconds. We have, we have worked, for example, with Terai Industries, which is a Japan-based uh, pharmaceutical company, in trying to find more, sta more, more stable structures uh, for identifying new, new protein candidates. So that's all for me. And Borja, I let you. All right, Albert. Thank you so very much. You. Yeah, yeah, let me let me show the um, the screen. Uh, yeah. Okay, so tell me when you see me my screen, the presentation right now. Is it okay? Can you see my my screen? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, well, uh, we have identified two scenarios where quantum inspired computing uh, may help in, in drug discovery. Uh, within the de novo drug design problem and in drug repurposing. So, uh, starting with the first one, uh, we have partnered with Polaris QB, a quantum uh, a, a company that joined uh, quantum computing with artificial intelligence to build a platform that relies on digital annealer to accelerate drug discovery. So, this platform delivers solutions in five steps. So, the first one, uh, uh, the platform identifies lead molecule candidates from a diverse virtual library of several billion molecules and assesses their quality, okay? 
Second, leads are evaluated using the structural information uh, of the pharmaceutical target and a set of physicochemical constraints. Third, uh, the platform leverages an aniline-based molecule filter. Okay. Fourth, uh, the output is then refined and ranked uh, with Polaris QB's machine learning algorithms for physicochemical properties and quantum mechanics simulation for binding affinities. And finally, the final output is uh, a short list of high quality molecules that are prioritized for synthesis and in vitro testing. On the other hand, uh, we also have partnered, uh, we, ha we have the, the drug re repurposing problem, sorry, uh, in which we work together with, with Torai Industries. Uh, Torai is well known for its textile, plastic, and carbon uh, fiber businesses, but the company is also developing a life science business. In this endeavor, we are leveraging know-how in advanced materials for research and development of pharmaceutical products and medical equipment. At the pharmaceutical research labs, uh, they developed three new drugs using digital annealer to predict the most stable structure for protein side chains. Proteins have various important functions in our bodies, including in the transport, synthesis, and breaking down of substances, as well as information transmission. Many drugs are designed to bind to proteins in, in our bodies in order to control their functions. Depending on the arrangement, they have a specific structural forms and perform certain functions. Uh, the structural arrangement information of proteins is especially useful in designing drugs that bind to proteins and control their functions. And much research focuses on deciphering uh, these structural arrangements. However, it is very difficult to experimentally determine the structural arrangements with, uh, with measuring equipment such as X-ray or electron microscopes. In order to solve this, uh, we are making efforts to predict structural arrangements uh, through a method in which we calculate the lowest energy state required for protein to achieve a stable structure. In this experiment, we limited the target to side chains, uh, and we use digital annealer to predict the combination that has the least amount of energy out of all flexible side chains in relation to the corresponding main chain structure. Specifically, uh, we used another method to exclude some side chain combinations that would definitely not become a stable structure. And then uh, we calculated the optimal side chain uh, out of a number of combinations totaling uh, about uh, 10 to the, to the power of, of 100. Okay. So here we can see that uh, we make use of uh, graph theory because graph theory uh, give us a, a 3D structural uh, method that is uh, richer than, than the conventional methods that relies on, on, on fingerprint, okay? We will uh, see more later. As a result, uh, a process that previously took uh, uh, more than four hours was completed in just 20 seconds. And in addition, uh, we could obtain calculation results uh, for proteins that we could not in the past. So given the, the, the drastic impacts uh, from the recent COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the search for a treatment is, is uh, of course, uh, uh, on across the globe, as, as, as you may know, as you know, sorry. And, and the School of Immunology and Microbial Sciences at King's College London is doing a lot of effort uh, trying to fight the COVID-19. This school is a multidisciplinary facility focusing on innovation and knowledge development in the areas of immunobiology, inflammation and infection diseases, and is carrying out research into understanding the immunobiology of disease, the host response, and SARS-CoV-2 diagnostics. In order to accelerate the research, uh, we started a, a collaboration with the Department of, of Infectious Diseases within SIMS at the very beginning of the pandemic uh, in order to help them finding a cure for COVID-19. You can see in, in this picture uh, part of the team uh, with the principal investigator and, and PhD uh, in molecular biology, Rocio, uh, at the right. Uh, there are several ways of tackling the virus uh, that range from blocking its entry into cells to inhibiting its replication. Either way, uh, treatment is urgently needed. Considering the length of time required for a new drug to be approved that we saw with Albert, uh, repurposing approved drugs is a valuable option to accelerate the drug discovery process. Uh, thus, uh, we are using digital annealer uh, to find similarities among uh, already approved molecules and desired properties for COVID-19 treatments. So as we have seen in the Torai Industries example, uh, most of the well-known methods uh, for measuring the similarity among, among molecules use 2D uh, molecular fingerprints to encode the structural information, 
which are efficient uh, in terms of execution times, of course, but lack the consideration of relevant aspects of molecular structures. Uh, thus, considering uh, 3D structural uh, properties of, mole of molecules increases the accuracy of results at the expense, of course, of higher computing times. So how do we do that? Well, we first make use of a bioinformatics library named RDKit, uh, which enables us to easily get the information regarding the molecule. We can gather information about every element, including how are they connected to each other. Uh, that is the, the 3D structure of the molecule that uh, we have uh, just seen, as well as its properties. So this is easy to see as, as a graph, uh, like here in, in, in the picture, okay? Uh, in which the vertices are the elements, the atoms or, or cycles of atoms, while the edges are the connections between them. Once we have the graph structure of, of each molecule, uh, we need to create a, a conflict graph. Uh, this conflict gra graph uh, will have information about the two molecules and will have some properties that make it useful to solve an optimization problem called the uh, maximum independent set problem or in a more general way, the co plex problem in which we have to select the independent vertices among them that maximize the weight of, the, of that subset. Solving that, that problem will lead us to obtain which elements have in common both molecules. So we can measure the similarity between them uh, very easy. So going into more detail, uh, each of the elements in a, in a molecule have some information, uh, like the element itself in, in the periodic table, of course, uh, whether it has explicit or, or implicit uh, hydrogens or the formal charge of it, okay? And this information is stored in a node of the graph. Like, uh, for instance, uh, this one. Since a cycle in a molecule is very stable and we do not lose information compressing it, uh, the graph representation considers a cycle as just one vertex, as we can see uh, here in this in these cases, okay? So this also simplifies the, the, the graph information. When considering this, uh, this compression of, of, of the cycles of, of the rings, uh, we can see here that we have three rings, okay, so uh, together, and then uh, we need to create one node for each of the rings and uh, a new artificial bond between them, okay? In a second step, uh, we need to create the conflict gra graph, uh, considering the information stored in each vertex. So for instance, if we look at vertex, uh, uh, V1 from graph G1 and VA for, from graph G, A, 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 G2, sorry, uh, we can see that the labels are exactly the same. They, they have exactly the same features. So uh, we can see they, uh, that having that, those same uh, labels, we can put together that information into one vertex of the conflict graph. In this case, this yellow vertex, okay, that uh, has information about the, the vertex V1 and VA. In the case we don't have exactly the same labels, but they are similar enough, uh, as we can see with uh, V2 and VB, that they share uh, one of the features in the in the labels. Uh, we can also put them in the same vertex of the conflict uh, of the conflict graph. In this case, in this blue vertex here. Okay. The difference uh, between uh, those vertices is that uh, in this case, in this new case, uh, the weight associated with that new vertex. Uh, will be uh, lower in the mathematical model, in the cubo model that we need to send to digital annealer. And, 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 and we need to take into account that we need to maximize the total weight, okay? In order to create the, the edges like this uh, red edge or, or this other green edge uh, here, uh, we need to think about the connections between the vertices in the original graphs, okay? So for instance, considering uh, the vertex VA, uh, V1, VA uh, here, and uh, V2, VB, like uh, in here, uh, we don't need to add any edge between them uh, since uh, we know that uh, V1 is connected to V2 as well as VA is connected to VB and, and they are uh, very similar as, as we have seen before. So we would like to keep them in the final solution. That, that's what, uh, what we would like to, to have, okay? In the same way, uh, we add an edge between uh, V1, VA, and uh, V1, VB, uh, because uh, if V1 is similar to VA, then at the same time, V1 uh, cannot be similar to VA. So we want to avoid these kind of things, okay? 
Uh, we also had edges in, in the case of Vertex uh, V1, VA, and, and V2, VC, with this green uh, edge, uh, because uh, V1 is connected to, to V2, uh, but VA is not direct, directly connected to VC. So uh, it's kind of strange uh, having those uh, nodes in the, in the final solution. Okay, So we wouldn't like to have those vertices in the final solution. All these edges, uh, the red ones and, and also the, the green ones, um, will add a, a negative weight uh, to the model in such a way that it's not worthwhile to add two vertices that are connected by an edge, getting somehow like a penalty term uh, when they are put together in the solution. Okay. So in the end, what we have is an objective function, uh, like in, in any other pr optimization problem, that will be to maximize the weight of the selected subset of vertices and some constraints that will tell us which vertices cannot be in the final solution at the same time. So finally, we construct the mathematical model, the, this cubo model in, in this way, okay? So here we will have the, uh, the objective function uh, that is just adding uh, every, every vertex with its own weight, okay? And then we add the penalty terms that will be the, uh, those edges uh, between, the, between the vertices in the graph. Uh, here we put a, a minus because we don't want uh, two vertices that are connected in, in uh, to be in the in the final solution. Okay, but in the specific case of digital annealer, uh, we need to consider that uh, digital annealer only solves of minimization problems. Okay, so we need to change the signs, and instead of having a maximization problem, we will have a minimization one with a minus in this position and a plus here. Okay, so after having this uh, mathematical model. Uh, we convert it into into Python with a, with our library, and then make a, a call to to a REST API. Okay. After digital annealer solves the problem, uh, we want to have a similarity measure uh, that will depend on on this delta value. Okay. Uh, which controls whether we want to weigh more uh, the maximum value of of the similarity or the minimum one. Okay. We have two different values here uh, since we are measuring the similarity. Uh, between two molecules, so it depends on which side you look at. Okay, so let's play with a demo. Let's see how it works. So here we have uh, a web application that we built for uh, uh, our collaboration with the with the King's College. Okay, this is um, uh, just a simplified version of the of the web application. Okay, and here we will select uh, several target molecules like remdesivir, funin inhibitor, or favipiravir. We, we can put it here uh, wherever we want and, and add it, of course, uh, to, the, to the web application. And uh, we select these target molecules because uh, we think that maybe they have some properties that could be good in order to fight COVID-19, OK? So then uh, we have a, a, a data set that is, is comprised of uh, more than 11,000 compounds. Uh, these compounds are uh, those ones that are uh, already approved by the FDA, the, the Fat and Drug Administration. Okay, so here we can put uh, several of them, like this one, or maybe uh, the acetyl exapeptide, or uh, maybe the other one is uh, sofosbuvir. Okay, uh, here in a in a real case scenario, what we would do. Uh, would be um, comparing uh, whatever target molecules that we want with the entire data set, okay? With the entire um, set of, of, of compounds that are already approved by the FDA. Of course, we cannot do it uh, right now because it takes a lot of time and, 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 and it's not possible uh, for, for, uh, for the demonstration, but, but it's okay just showing these, uh, these comparisons, okay? Then we can select a, a value for, for the delta. We usually use this 0 0.5, and that's why, uh, that's because um, uh, we have two different values of similarity, uh, the maximum and the minimum, and, and we will take uh, the, the average in this case, OK? If we put uh, a, a higher value of delta, we, we will uh, take more part of the maximum value of the similarity and uh, vice versa, OK? Also, we can filter molecules depending on its similarity. So let's say that uh, we only want to uh, have molecules that are uh, uh, more or less similar, at least 50% of, of similarity, OK? And then after 
pushing this this button, the start comparing button, uh, what we do is getting all the uh, pairs that we want to compare. Here we have three target molecules and three uh, molecules from the data set, so we will have nine pairs of molecules, okay? And for each of the pairs, what we do is getting the, the, the graph representation of the of the molecule, okay, the, the 3D structure of the of the molecule. And then we create the, the conflict graph, okay? After uh, after creating this, this conflict graph, what we do is uh, build the mathematical model, the, the cubo model that that uh, that digital annealer will will solve, okay? And then uh, we send it uh, through the through the net uh, through a through a REST API as 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 we have seen before, and digital annealer uh, solves the problem. Okay, after solving the problem, what we have is uh, a set of of uh, of elements of every molecule that will be similar. Okay, and then uh, what we do is uh, calculating this similarity uh, not only with the with this value but also um, in a in a um, in an in, in a picture way, okay. So, for instance, for the first one, uh, having the remdesivir and the GS6620, we have a similarity of 87%. That is the average uh, between the maximum and the minimum similarity. Okay, so it's uh, kind of similar. And uh, we also show here uh, the um, uh, which parts of the of the compounds, which parts of the molecules are uh, similar okay in, in in this magenta color so with this magenta color uh, what we see is the structure that is uh, similar uh, between within the molecules we show this 2d representation but also uh, we make use of a library in order to show uh, this 3d uh, representation of the molecule okay so uh, these representations these these pictures of the of the molecules with the uh, uh, with the parts highlighted uh, that are similar, okay. Um, this help us a lot. Help uh, help the the researchers at the lab uh, a lot in order to 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 know what are the the real candidates, the real potential candidates. Because maybe uh, sometimes we can find that uh, we have a, a pair of molecules that have a similarity of sixty percent, but they, this is not enough, okay. This, the number is not is not enough. In the case of Rendesivir and, and the acetyl hexapeptide, we can see that uh, the similarity is not above the, the 50%. So uh, it makes no sense to, to show the results here. Okay. And then uh, we have the, the Rendesivir and, and Sophos will be um, a comparison that, that we can see is a 64% similarity. And uh, there is some structure that is similar between uh, those molecules. Okay. So um, maybe they are rotated, or, or maybe um, uh, we can see in the in the three D representation that that maybe the angles are not exactly the same, but at least we know that some parts are very very similar. Okay. In the case of the furin inhibitor and the GX GS six six two zero happens the same as before. Uh, we do not have a, a good value for for similarity. But maybe here, like in the furin inhibitor and the acetyl hexapeptide 3, uh, we have a, a similarity, a value of similarity that is above the 60%. So it's uh, more or less good. But uh, if we see the, the parts that are common in the in the molecules, they are not together like in the other ones. And, and maybe this is not a, a real good potential candidate, right? And for the rest of the, um, of the comparisons that we would like to, to have, uh, we can see that uh, there are no um, no comparisons that are above the 50 percent that that we could put in the in the in the filter okay okay so uh, yeah having this uh, said uh, had, uh, what have we achieved so far with this uh, collaboration okay uh, well we have validated that this approach uh, of molecule comparison with a quantum inspired computer is feasible okay solving the problem with with digital annealer uh, we have very short ex execution times thanks to digital annealer and the precision of the results are improved thanks to using a graph model that considers more information than a traditional fingerprint methods as, as we have seen before okay and well i think that the, the key part is that we do not only show the similarity uh, between the molecules we also show 
which specific parts of the molecules are, are similar. And, and this is key for, for the revision of experts in order to know what are the, the real potential candidates uh, in order to, to perform uh, some experiments at the lab. So, uh, well, let me let me share with you a short video that summarizes what we have seen uh, in this presentation. The pharmaceutical industry has never needed to apply disruptive innovation faster to find new ways of reducing the two billion dollar and twelve to fifteen years average process costs. This urgent need for the cures to life-threatening diseases comes as globalization has spread diseases at alarming speed. It means any acceleration in pharmaceutical research and development processes could save lives. Imagine being able to cut the early stages of the drug discovery process from 48 months down to just seven weeks. The potential molecules can be analyzed and filtered up to 10,000 times faster, making it a reality to go from searching millions of molecular structures to trillions before selecting those that will deliver the greatest chance of success, pushing the boundaries to be always optimal. Okay, so... Well, thank you very much for being here, and we will be happy to answer all the questions you have. Oui. Borja, thank you so much, Borja, Albert. That was fantastic, super interesting. Wow, you know, the future is here. I cannot listen to anything. I, I, I don't know if hang there's on, a problem. Hang with on. Ah, yes, okay, okay. Ah, okay, now. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was saying thank you so much for that fascinating presentation. The future is here. Sure. This is it. <laughs> They're actually asking you a question where you need the crystal ball for the future. Will ca quantum computing re replace classical computing in drug discovery? Well, uh... Of course, the, <laughs> there is and a when, promise. When? If you tell us when. <laughs> well, there, the, no, there, there is a promise of, of quantum computing to, to solve uh, maybe one of the most interesting problems uh, these days, that, that this is like the drug discovery problem. But we don't exactly know when this will happen. I know. Yeah. Es because it's, it's, trampa, just still, pero... <laughs> yeah, it, it's just still in development. Just in case you knew, I mean, this. This is this. You are obviously early adopters. Sure. Well, sure. We have to follow suit. Sure. In this sense, they also ask you about talent, uh, the, because they they mentioned there's no really uh, people uh, with the, the um, development of the, the 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 training that you guys have. You cannot just put a bunch of uh, traditional. And a computer analyst into a room and transform them into a quantum computing experts. So I would say that no one yes. I would say that no one yes. So I, I guess that anyone that has a research or a PhD, and anyone, I mean, there is a few people in the world, but there is people that knows uh, about uh, optimization can solve these kind of problems. But at the end, from a technical point of view, what you need to, to know is the language that, that it's used in this kind of, 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 of technology. So we have, normally we code in Python, so typical coding method for any anything related to data science or data engineering, so that's not new. And then uh, if you go to ABM or to other, or Google or other provider, they, they do have their own, let's say, language, but normally that, that's not the, the tricky part. So I would say the tricky part is the technology itself, so that the poor quantum gates have to evolve more in order to be able to, for, for industrial use and for quantum inspired technology than us, it's ready. And I would say that it's more important to have the business knowledge and, 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 and find out which is the problem that we, would, what we, that we want to solve, than the technology itself. So I wouldn't say it's easy, but I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's the most complex uh, problem to, to be solved. So it's more about the ability and having the talent, but the talent is there and, and it's just about... There's a lot hiring. of potential then for a lot of uh, future engineers and uh, experts, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And in terms of scaling, scaling, because they say molecular dynamics are hard to replicate. How do you cope? What's going to happen to the scaling of this model? 
Well, in fact, uh, this is a different approach uh, because we are not looking at the um, at the mechanical part of the molecules. We are only uh, comparing the structural part of the molecule. So, so it's more or less easy or, or an easier task than, than that uh, that you are mentioning. So, well, here is like, uh, as, as I've said before, it's uh, just comparing uh, some graphs and, and, and anyone that, that has uh, working with the, with the computer science field and know about graphs. So it's, it's not that complicated. It's not the quantum mechanics part, okay? Okay, so there's a lot, a lot to do, a lot to learn. Uh, the future is here. Guys, we couldn't have a much better uh, uh, talk to finish this uh, three days of uh, Big uh, Things Conference 2020 in the attic. You've opened the door to uh, a lot of things to come. We can't wait to see what's happening or what's going to happen. So you better come next year to keep us posted on your, on your studies, on your work. Thank you so much for being with us, both of you, to be the, as I said, the final touch on this uh, fantastic uh, three days conference. And uh, I wish you all the luck and let's keep, uh, let's keep um, uh, posted, keep us posted. And we'll sure. stay, stay tuned on what Fujitsu does with all this quantum computing uh, uh, new frontier. So um, all the best. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.